Okay, so we are ready to start with our first exercise from the scene. So here it comes. The first exercise is ft print alphabet. Create a function that displays the alphabet in lower case on a single line by ascending order starting from the letter A. And below I have the prototype. I have void ft print alphabet as an argument void. So I have a function that performs an action, doesn't take any parameters and doesn't give me back any value. Okay, let's try to understand how to implement this function. So here I have written two possible implementations of the print alphabet function. The first one is this one in line 15, and the other one is this one in line 26. In my main function, I call these two functions, and uh, in between of them, I put uh, new line characters. Let's try to run this program and uh, let's see how it works. So as you surely know, I call my GCC compiler I'm also using these three flags, which are mandatory for 43 school. Basically, it is gonna make of every warning a mistake. So the program won't compile if there is a warning. And then of course, I put the name of the file itself. Enter. All right, now I should have my a.out file, which stands for assembler.out file, it is not important. And then we just simply launch our process. Enter. As you can see, we have the two alphabets. Uh, in lowercase, in ascending order, everything seems to work perfectly. Okay, let's try really to understand these two functions and how they work. So let's really mimic the way in which the computer is launching this process. So we really start from the main function, as you surely know. Then we call this function. So from line 37, we jump in line 15. And then from line 15, we start to run this code. As before mentioned, uh, the function doesn't take any argument and doesn't return anything. So it just performs an action. In our case, it just prints the alphabet. Okay, in our exercise, I can only use the write function. As you can see from uh, what is written here, allowed function write. So to use this function, we include the file Unix standard. If you don't know what I'm doing, just check my video on write, which is the most important video for these initial exercises. So always keep in mind what is a computer. You have a calculator, an arithmetic logic unit, so a machine that is able to perform arithmetic and logical calculations. And on the other end, I have a RAM, which is a fancy note-taking system in which you can stock binary digits. So knowing that, I can only stock some numbers inside the computer. And indeed, the characters are just fancy numbers. So we came up with an encoding of numbers into characters. This encoding is called the ASCII code. You can tap inside your terminal this command, man, ASCII, and this code will pop up. Now go to the decimal set, which is the one which in which we are interested. And as you can see, we have 127 numbers that encode a character. The alphabet ranges from uh, the number 65 to the number 90 for the uppercase, while for the lowercase, we have from 97 to 122. So what do I have to do if I want to write a character inside the terminal? I have to stock a number in memory. So in my special case, I just stock a short C and C is equal to 96. Why 96? You will understand immediately. I make a loop, a while loop that has a condition, which is while C is less than 123. So here I'm just saying until my character C is not 123, which is the character just after the letter Z, what do you do? You just write what the character, I put an ampersand here just to tell the address of C because write is implemented in this fashion. It requires a buffer here, so it requires a pointer. In the standard output, in the first position of write, I have a one that stands for the standard output, one byte. So I'm just telling go into memory at the address of this short C, take what is inside this box and just flush it out in the standard output, which is the display. At every iteration, just increase by one the letter C. So this plus plus is the prefix increment operator. So before C is used, I just increment the value of C. Let me tweak a little bit the code to make it more intelligible. As you can see, now I've changed the code. I've changed my value of the C character to 97, and I have put my plus plus beneath the right. The trick of writing like before was just to writing shorter code to save some lines, but it is not necessary. And indeed it is not uh, intelligible and this is bad. So I was just writing like a pro coder, which is not the case. Okay, now you may wonder why I used a short data type. There is indeed the data type char, which is exactly for characters. 
Let's try to see if the code works the same with the char. As you can see, it works properly, indeed. And let's try another little tweak of the code. I don't use char anymore. I'm going to use along here. And then compile and run works. So I can really use all the data, which are part of the integer family. Here I cannot use like float. Float, it is not going to work properly, as you can see, right? Because the way in which data is stocked inside a float data type is different than the data stocked inside an integer data type. So here, if I say char, I'm just saying, hey, give me a byte of memory, one single byte, and stock data inside this byte like an integer. That's really what I'm saying to the computer. Char doesn't mean anything, it's just an abstraction for me, programmer. Here, I could have written like uh, 97 is lowercase a, so I could have written like that. It would have been the same. Let's check it out. As you can see, it works, right? It is really the same thing. Let's try to understand every line as the computer understands it. Line 17, give me one byte of memory and call it C. Inside this byte in memory, just put an electrical state, which is 97. So the computer is gonna turn on and off the single bits, the single light bulbs in our abstraction to represent the number 97 in binary. Then I'm saying while, so until a certain condition is met, which is this condition, it is C is less than 123. So why exactly 123? Because, well, you saw it before, because the last character of the alphabet is 122. So I want the condition to be true until the number is maximum 122. Pretty simple, right? So until C in less than 123, so in human words, until C is still inside the alphabet, what do you do? You just write that character, you just write C in the standard output, which is by default the display. And then what do you do? You increment C. It is just a number. You can increment by one. And then we go back in our while, and then we do all the same until we will arrive to 123. In that case, the condition is false and the function ends. So it has been performed an action. I don't have a value that has to be returned. I just see on the standard output my alphabet. So here you understood that a char, it is just a fancy way of calling a byte in memory. A character is just a number which is disguised as a symbol. In our case, a lowercase hey. And basically that's it. I have written another function that, look at this, this time is gonna start from this character which is the grave accent. Let's check the ASCII code. As you can see, the grave accent is the number 96. So the character after 96 is 97, indeed our first character that we want. So I say, please compiler, just find the spot in the memory, just two bytes in this way. This time I use uh, an integer type short, so two bytes. It could have been uh, an integer or a long, it doesn't really matter, as long as it is a family integer type. So here I just put short just because I want that you understand that this is just a fancy way of calling a space in memory. So short for the compiler is two bytes. Oh, you want two bytes, a short, okay. For a char is enough, by the way, only one byte. That's why we have the char type. Here I say, hey dear compiler, I want one byte and call this byte C. Put inside this slot in memory, inside this byte, this value, which is the number 96 from the ASCII code that you just saw. So this representation is just for us humans that we have to deal with data. But in reality, what is that? It is this one. This is what really the computer sees. So a binary number, in this case, the number 96 in the binary form. Yeah, in C, I can write directly the things in binary. I could have written like this, C equal 96. I could have written like this, like, like the character itself, so the grave accent. Or I could have written like this in hexadecimal. They will mean the same thing. What is more intelligible to you? You decide. At the end of the day, what is put into memory is this binary form. So you have transistor, which are turned on. That's the number 96 for the computer. So that's the character, grave character. Let's see if it works with the binary representation. Compile, as you can see, it works perfectly because there is no difference in the way data is stocked in memory. These are basically all the same thing. It is just a different way of representing them. I would argue that this way of representing data with the character itself is the most intelligible one, but it doesn't really matter for the computer itself, okay? So basically the loop is the same as the one before. So which are the key lessons taken away from this exercise? One, that 
the data type name is just a fancy way of, of making reference to a quantity of bytes in memory. In this case, char simply means I want one byte and the things you're gonna put inside this byte have to be in the integer form, not in the float form. I'll leave you a link in the description if you don't know the difference of integers type and floats type. It is a really important point if you want to understand how everything works. So from the integer type, I have char, short, int, long, 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 and so forth. This fancy name simply means one byte, two byte, four byte, eight bytes, and so forth. You get the point, right? I want a space in memory and treat it like an integer type. If I say float or double, I say, hey, I want, for example, for a float, four bytes and treat the data I'm gonna put inside like a float. So arrange the bits accordingly. Check the video in the description. The other important key lesson is that for the compiler, there is no difference in writing the data in its binary form directly. So I can write a char with this binary notation, or I can write in decimal notation, or I can write directly the character, which is just a number, as you already have seen in the ASCII code. This is basically what you learned with this exercise, which is already a big leap, I think. Thank you for watching.